Okay, just a mini series on looking at if I knew then. So it's a classic statement. If I knew then what I know now, would I have done what I did? Or would I have done something different? That's the million dollar question. So we're going to take a look at a few Blitz games. Yes, these are the quicker games. As you know, don't put too much weight on them, but you know, it's just um, going to see how we performed in these particular games. Three minute games, zero increment. And really, we're doing like a retrospective. If I knew then what I know now, and these were only played this week, so it's not like they were played 50 million years ago. So it's a modern retrospective. If we knew then what we know now, would we have done anything different? So we played black in this game. So we block the pawn. We like doing blocking the pawn. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Just remembering it is a three minute game. So we develop the knight as we do. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Just like the opponent is managing these squares here, you know, same, it's the mirror effect in a sense. And we develop the knight. So we're just wanting to get our minor pieces out as best possible. Maybe look into at some point, strangulate this area, but we'd need more support with the bishop, etc., on here. So that might take a while. At the same token, it's just developing the knight to manage squares, potentially looking for a capture here if they're looking to fall, push forward here. So there's many options, but in the main event, it's developing the minor pieces. So now we're looking to get a little bit activated. We want to say, right, okay, we're attacking through to the queen, so we're going to x-ray through, give them something to think about. It's nothing major in the grand scheme of things, but it is a little bit annoying if it gets later on in the game and the queen is still there being held to ransom. So we push the pawn up and obviously making space for our dark square bishop either to support or bring the bishop out or to bring it here, depending on what happens in the game. So we bring the bishop into the centre and again it's like, so targeting the pawn here, if they forget themselves and they castle and the move, we get the knight out of the way, you can get the pawn. It tends not to happen, but it can happen. This is why we continue doing it. And the fianchetto. So we castle, king safety. And they're moving the bishop twice and it looked a little bit ominous. I'm thinking, all right, they've lost a bit of tempo, they've not castled. But it is a quick game. It's a three minute game, so... Even when you do moving pieces twice, sometimes you don't, you're not able to capitalize on the tempo wins. So we bring our bishop back because we saw them dancing with theirs. We're thinking, well, okay, what we can do is look to bring our bishop here and see if we can open up this square and maybe start putting some pressure towards their king. So they move their bishop again. So at this point, I'm thinking, oh, the dancing bishop. It's usually the dancing knight, but uh, this one's just dancing with the bishop. So we continue with our mini plan of attacking the bishop, but they're not interested in capturing, so we capture her. And now we're attacking the queen with the knight. It's also attacking the pawn. If the queen moves out of the way, we can take the pawn. I suppose it can come here, so which it does. So we go and support our pawn, also making space for the queen. We're hoping that maybe they're thinking, oh, let's just take because the bishop is actually supporting. But they don't do that. So we bring the knight back. It's got a safe haven. And we bring the knight back. So at this moment in time, there's nothing majorly wrong as far as our movements. So in terms of if I knew them, um, what I know now, realistically, I don't think there's much that would be changed um, at this point. 
So they bring the knight in, attacking. Doesn't look like it's attacking anything. I think it's looking to just be captured, really, with the bishop. So we capture, and then we can attack the pawn. And now it's supporting with their pawn, making space for our queen to put a check on their king. So feeling fairly comfortable, but not as, what's the word now? Don't feel as strong because everything seems to be a little bit jammed down. We're trying to make a way in towards their king, attacking somehow. We do have the knights, which is a good thing because at least they've got a bishop and everything seems to be locked down. So that might be to their detriment. So the only plus we've got is that we have flexible knights in a locked down area. So based on the if we knew then what we know now, that type of psychology um, still works because of the lockdown nature. Smallest of things, you have to be able to capitalize on it though. Just saying, well, you've got flexible knights and they've got a lockdown bishop doesn't mean a right lot if you can't do anything with it. So they castle into the queen. So now we're trying to make space towards opening up towards their king area. Don't, didn't really want to because of the fact of, you know, the jam down bishop. But at the same token, we have to try and do something or else we may just end up being in lockdown city forever. So they capture, we capture with the knight. And now we're trying to make some sort of attack formation towards the king. Bring the queen across, bring the queen back down again. At that point, hold on, let's have a look at this. So the gauge bar is going a little bit crazy for white here. And is it because of this? I don't think it's saying that though, is it? It's saying queen e2. Queen e2. It's moving the queen out of the way. So it's not actually attacking here. So when, when I was in the game, I did momentarily think, oh, maybe he's got me here, but we can, t we can just take the queen off the board. So they did capture, yeah, so that's no big problems there. I, I, I would do the same thing. I think that was for white to make the right move, which is queen e2, but they didn't do that in order for them to keep that advantage, it looks like. You know, so yet again, not too concerned about that type of situation. More concerned the fact that I'm allowing their dark square bishop to look like it's going to have some play in the game. So that's my only concern. So bring the rook across and uh, supporting the pawn and looking to attack the pawn that's got no protection. All simple, straightforward stuff. Knight comes down on blocks. So we're looking to get our knight activated, looking to get it uh, into the into the zone where it's like going to be a little bit of a menace. So we jump up attacking the rook and we're looking to get this space here. Maybe try and get the rooks because they're kind of double. And they attack and we get the opportunity to go in and at this point the opponent then resigned. So this particular game here felt fairly okay apart from the only downside of potentially allowing the dark square bishop to be in the game when it was kind of locked down. So bishop, bishop takes, takes the knights attacking. There, right, okay, so let's have a look. Yeah, so if we keep this lockdown position like this and we don't take the knight and we don't want to get the bishop involved because we've got flexible knight at this point, um, they do have three pieces themselves and we do have a dark square bishop, which is looks fairly okay anyway. So in retrospect, probably could have just kept the bishop on the board. And it wouldn't have caused us too much trouble. But because it's a quick game, maybe if the knight came and attacked, then it equalises the, the knight and the bishop sort of formation. Maybe the knight wouldn't take anyway. Yeah, so when we did take, it's kind of opening a little bit for the bishop, but not too much. So let's take that one a little bit further then. So then we came here, and then it's still locked down. So at this point... This is where really we can look to say, could we keep it locked down? We just really wanted to see if we could put pressure here, I think, and that's what we did. But is there anything else that we could do? This is saying queen h4. Oh, it's already going for the check anyway. Let's, I think we did that anyway. All right, so we did that fine. 
And next move, queen e7. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Coming back here, queen e7. Right, uh, so I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned. Yeah, it's this pawn move here. Maybe, maybe not attacking this. Maybe just trying to keep this bishop locked in. Is there anything else? Knight c5, it's saying. Oh, attacking the queen. Knight c5, yeah, using the advantage. Yeah, maybe at one point sink, sinking it in here or something. Yeah. If he comes across here, though, what happens then? B6. Yeah, just keeping a little, I think, just a little bit more locked down, I think, going forward. Because um, the, the game on, on the whole was fairly okay. I felt fairly comfortable moving through. But I did feel like I just, although the opponent didn't take advantage of the bishop when it started opening up, but I think going forward, Probably just, although I don't like lockdown, it's just a matter of utilising it at the right moment, at the right time. 